Every year in Israel, the Herzliya Conference on National Security, which took place last month, sets Israel's security agenda for the coming year. This year, the conference focused largely on international law and the Goldstone Report that investigated war crimes in last year's attack on Gaza. The Goldstone Report is going to be discussed by people uh, later, but let me say the following. I think that this, this is a Trojan horse that takes advantage of a legal perspective and uh, a defense uh, terrorist activities that get, come out of populations, and these activities at the end of the day uh, uh, is uh, detrimental not only uh, to us, to the citizens themselves, Many at the conference argued that the military investigation Israel launched is sufficient to satisfy the Goldstone report. As evidence, two soldiers were charged this week for using a Palestinian boy during the invasion as a human shield. In fact, much of Israel's prosecution focused on individual soldiers. The Real News spoke to Mikhail Manikin, the co-director of Breaking the Silence, an Israeli organization of veterans who have blown the whistle on their experiences in the army, including during the attack on Gaza last winter. What's happening now is, is from what I understand, is, is Israel is saying, it's not Israel, it's the military saying we'll conduct our internal investigation. And it's um, unacceptable in a democratic society that an execut executive branch um, checks itself because they're fine at it. Meaning, um, even if the military uh, wasn't already and you know there are so many lies uh, that the military has been already caught up with. But even if those didn't happen, I would expect an external investigation in a democratic society. I mean, but Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu indicated that there will not be an investigation outside the military. This week, the European Union endorsed implementing the Goldstone's recommendations and again called for Israel and the Palestinians to conduct independent investigations. The resolution the EU adopted, however, didn't indicate any particular action the Union would actually take. The UN's process hasn't led to concrete actions either, as members of the Security Council said that they will veto the report. Many are therefore saying these channels are exhausted, something that the Goldstone itself predicted. It said that in the context of increasing unwillingness on the part of Israel to open criminal investigations that comply with international standards and establish judicial accountability over its military actions in the occupied Palestinian territory, the mission supports the reliance on universal jurisdiction. Universal jurisdiction is a concept that rose out of the Geneva Conventions of 1949. By signing the conventions, countries agreed to make their legal systems capable of holding individuals accountable from any country who are suspected of committing grave crimes. These include crimes against humanity, genocide and war crimes. Because it allows individual citizens to start the proceedings, universal jurisdiction is supposed to alleviate the political burden from governments, and as the Goldstone suggested, it has become a tool many are using to enforce its recommendations. The difference in prosecution lies in that while Israel's investigation targets individual soldiers, universal jurisdiction allows holding accountable the political and military leaders who gave the orders in the first place. At the beginning of March in Barcelona, Spain, the Russell Tribunal on Palestine gathered for two days of deliberations on the European Union's complicity in Israeli war crimes. It ruled the EU must sanction Israel as a way to pressure it to abide by international law. At the tribunal, The Real News spoke to Daniel Makover, a partner with the British legal firm Hickman and Rose. He's been behind much of the European effort to put to trial Israeli officials who have been accused of war crimes, such as former foreign minister Tsipi Livni. Since the Second World War, we created, that's the international community working through states, a whole series of international crimes which are so heinous that you don't need to have any connection to the crime for your state to have a duty to prosecute someone if they fall into your hands. And those, if, if only the, the people who drafted all those provisions back in 1948 on genocide, 49, on gruel crimes, and then subsequently on crimes against humanity and uh, torture, had really lived by those principles, we would be in a much better and safer world in terms of day-to-day -day human rights abuses. Unfortunately, in many countries, the the idea of impunity has taken root and universal jurisdiction literally says and the citizens who are trying to make it real say we need to uproot impunity 
through universal jurisdiction. Universal jurisdiction against such Israeli leaders as Shaul Mofaz, Daron Almog, and Ariel Sharon has been attempted in many countries, such as the Netherlands, Canada, Spain, and Belgium. Because of the warrants issued against them, the Israeli Foreign Ministry today advises Israeli officials where not to travel. Israel also pressures these countries to change their laws. Before the Russell Tribunal took place, I spoke to Daniel Makover via Skype from London. The combination of Israeli and US pressure resulted in a change to Belgian law, which was applied immediately, that is, even to existing cases. A combination of American and Israeli pressure on the Spanish foreign ministry and on the ministries there produced a change in the law, which was introduced through the Spanish parliament about nine months ago, and which has become law. What they've removed in Spain is the ability of a person to start that process unless there is a Spanish connection in that case. What happened in the Netherlands in the specific case of Ami Ayalon, the former head of the GSS, who visited the Netherlands in uh, May 2008. The College of Attorney Generals, which is a, an important body within the, the system in the Netherlands, um, gives advice to the prosecutor about immunity issues. The controversy in the Netherlands was that, in fact, the advice from the college arrived the day after Amiadon um, left the Netherlands and the advice was he did not have immunity and therefore he could have been and should have been arrested. Many Israeli officials and academics have tried to delegitimize universal jurisdiction. For example, Boaz Ganor of the Interdisciplinary Center that organized the Herzliya Conference argued it's a legal loophole and that its invoking is the result of terrorists hijacking European legal systems. A transformation in modern terrorist warfare, a transition from a war in which there is an attempt to win the war through the use of armies to a war, and this is not new anymore, where they are trying to defeat the desire to fight on the part of another war, a war made up of the media. And now we're getting to the further transformation, an attempt to win the war by creating legitimacy for the warfare and here the uh, arms are the uh, international courts of law lawfare the description of universal jurisdiction as some kind of loophole or its application and the way it's uh, used in the united kingdom is extraordinary and a very strange description of a widely accepted use of international criminal law. Israel has used and invoked universal jurisdiction famously in the Eichmann case. What has been asked for by Israel, or being and under consideration at the moment, apparently in the UK, is to give the Attorney General who has these charging decisions a role in the arrest decisions. If there is an amendment to UK law involving the Attorney General at the arrest stage, that would be a retrograde step. That will be enough for the uh, British authorities to satisfy the Israeli authorities that there won't be any future arrests of their nationals um, because they, would, they will be assured, in effect, that the Attorney General will veto the granting of arrest warrants against um, Israeli suspects in future. A lot of important figures uh, in government, not sort of, you know, not fringe NGOs like myself, also, also serious people, you know, uh, have, been, have, been calling for, have been calling for an external investigation. I mean, the, the, the Chief Justice of, uh, of the Supreme Court uh, said last week that she thinks that it should happen. Everybody actually who was not involved in the operation itself uh, from government or from the military has been talking about external investigation. So you have a whole line uh, from every forms of, from, from every level of, of leadership in this country, from, from, from the legal sphere to the military sphere to the human rights sphere. Uh, the only people who haven't been talking about external investigation, unsurprisingly, are uh, uh, the military that was involved in Gaza and those politicians who were in charge of the military that was involved in Gaza. I'd rather Israel conduct its own investigation in, ex internally, and that's because it doesn't only interest me uh, finding uh, justice in what happened in Gaza, uh, which already happened. I'm interested in living here. Uh, I'm interested in cast lead too, you know. I'm interested in, in what will happen here a year from now, or five years from now, ten years from now. 
And the only way of dealing with that seriously is, is trying to build um, a functioning civil society. I just think it's very sad because it basically means that our, our courts aren't functioning. Um, and I want to live here with a functioning court. You know.